everybody and welcome to resolve the unresolved forum this is sandeep kosh here i am part of the panesia team uh in fact this is our third uh session webinar session focusing on businesses interacting with entrepreneurs people who have been managing small and large businesses and the objective is to try and focus on certain needs which have been shared by entrepreneurs or business people from time to time uh today we are going to focus on one very very important and a very heavily discussed subject that is the social media and we would be focusing on how we can use social media to scale up our businesses in a big way because people have been talking about social media a lot we use every aspect of social media for our personal engagements official engagements such but to use it constructively for purpose of generating business and reaching out has not been exercised fully to its capacity by everybody with that i would like to introduce uh my co-panelist mr ravinder goel and mr morley hello mr goel hello is founder of panesia abs consulting group he himself is a veteran in vocational skilling for the last 27 plus years and he has delved and dived deep into educating and training people across the country through his network operations and his team for the last 2 to 2 and a half decades and i've also spent a lot of time and research trying to identify how to reach out to masses and at present is also exploring extensively the use of technology and technological capabilities to deliver programs and services to both the corporates and engaging the students and getting skilled to take on the industry uh we have our guest speaker today mr morley mr morley has more than 25 years of experience rich experience in the corporate sector he has spent time with the corporates both in india and in middle east specifically ue he started off his career way back in the early 90s in with the hospitality sector in mumbai if i'm right and yes. after spending some time say 6 to 7 years in mumbai he decided to shift over to ue to join uh, hands with his cousin over there and focus on uh the hr specific areas in that sector and various industries in ue and he has been uh very heavily interested in learning and development have been focusing on technologies also and that is a area which he focused on with various corporates in middle east he spent a substantial amount of time i believe somewhere around 2007 uh mr murli joined with coca cola as a head talent resource and later on yes. he moved within the organization into lnd functions mr murli he himself is a post graduate in hrm from xlri he got his cplp certifications from atd us and is also a certified nlp trainer he himself uh is pioneering a live learning academy in fact he has moved back from ue and is operating out of kochi at present and is trying to focus on various learning initiatives which i'm sure later on we'll get time to discuss with mr morley to start off uh mr goel if you can say a few words yeah hello uh, everyone and uh, today if we look at uh, the business growth 
of the social media, I would like to share something uh, when we started back, way back in 1992. So uh, during that era, reaching out to customers, reaching out to your buyers, potential buyers, reaching out to your vendors was altogether a different means. It was, it was more particular to the direct, uh, direct kind of approaches, uh, exhibitions, or uh, probably road shows uh, or by some other means like cinema halls. So in last uh, probably you can say 28 years, uh, there is a whole, uh, whole set of uh, domain change where all those activities which were there, uh, which we used to call the direct or indirect marketing, probably now people are shifted to mostly onto the social media side. The TV advertisements are going on definitely, print media advertisement is going on definitely, direct shows, exhibition, everything is working. But social media is such a platform where you can target your customers and identify them. Whereas when we go to any other platform, identifying your customer is uh, definitely not uh, possible. You have to handle all kind of customers which are, uh, which may be your potential customers, which may not be. But when you do, uh, uh, do strategies, you adopt strategies for your social media, like many of the uh, people who have joined, probably they must be aware about uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and uh, like Google advertisements, Google search. Uh, but there are many other many other platforms. People have uh, definitely uh, worked very hard. Like we have our uh, uh, speaker Morley, who has spent his yeah. a couple of uh, one or two more decades on this. So I welcome uh, Murli uh, to how uh, people can uh, use social media to grow their business and definitely to all the uh, participants, they can type in their queries in the chat box and we would like to answer them once uh, the Murli's talks is over. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Goyal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you, Ms. Sandeep. Uh, fantastic introduction. and. Uh, there are two reasons which this is a special session for me. Number one is that uh, there's the first ever Zoom meeting uh, in India that I'm, you know, facing uh, a, a volume of, uh, you know, audience. So for audience, <coughs> audience. because uh, all, hello. Yes, it's fine. Please carry on. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Okay. Because all through, uh, all through my trainings, what I have more experience of more of a workshops, direct trainings, interaction with the, uh, you know, the trainers. And when I came here and set up the company also, I was more focused on looking at a workshop model where we say that the transfer of knowledge or exchange of information happens in a much, much faster, energetic manner. But uh, yeah, and that, with that in mind, obviously, I, I straight away jumped into a training, uh, you know, venture uh, but uh, the the subject is very important in that relevance too because i myself am completely moving into social media not for the not for the objective of uh, uh, you know uh, scaling up business but as a tool of using the power of e learning or going through 100% uh, self paced programs all those kind of things uh, so keeping that aside uh, what the topic today is definitely as the title says how to scale up business using the power of social media. So uh, I don't need to reiterate the, the time we are going through right now is challenging, is tough times and uh, small to medium to large every company is undergoing a lot of changes. And uh, unfortunately, some companies are rolling down. But there are people, there are companies, there are you know, some segments at least seeing there is a large opportunity in the coming years. And particularly when you talk about this, anything working on coming up on internet based WWW and that industry, it's growing like anything. Now, the one good example is the transactions, the business transaction, what is happening on, you know, using the power of internet itself, e-commerce. Look at the number of businesses that is going into the industry. A lot of people are, a lot of, uh, even the brick and mortar business at the moment at shops, they are thinking in a different mode right now. So in that sense, 
the topic is very very relevant how can we scale up how how can we utilize this so i'll be addressing this this topic in in three phases one is that uh, first we look into the benefits of social media marketing and we know that by by the name and by the phrase we know that when we say social media we see, suddenly comes up with us a facebook is a twitter a youtube or uh, a couple of other channels or you know thing so we see as a end user a customer we see there is an ad coming up sometimes i go and click it to find out what is happening inside what the company is trying to exchange or tell as a service we see the uh, few seconds of clippings of anything as a customer as an end user i see only that but even for imagine i am a company and i want to bring it to that level to make a presence in the social media it's a big task how do we do it and we as a customer what i see is only the final picture but what are the benefits as a company as an organization as a service that's what we are going to do it second thing is that what kind of preparations the companies need to do that's very important it's not that there is a you know there's a uh, you know uh, complete different uh, industries coming up even within that in the social media using the power as we speak but for any organization who's trying to scale up now we're not talking about sustaining or surviving we are definitely want to use the power of the scaling up how do we do that as an organization what all things we need to keep ready even before getting into this social media so called marketing the third thing is that the tools what are the tools I briefly touch upon it because uh, uh, tools is available everywhere and then how do we do a backward integration that's what so the first benefit the first benefit of the social media marketing is number one is it increases the brand awareness or brand exposure because the moment your company put your name put your video put your logo put your flyer into this space into the sea of social media what happens is, is it just goes out through images through posts through videos so there are uh, we are talking about a different aspects you now the first benefit itself is very wide when we talk about videos what what does comes in mind youtube when we talk about the post what comes in mind for uh, facebook when we talk about an image by itself what comes in mind instagram because every medium every social media marketing medium is handling a different variety of things so all these are important but all these can handle can reach can give your company exposure to different levels that's number one and it gives a tickle down effect cascading effect the moment your company uh, products or service or whatever you are into it goes down into a tickling effect Ca we call cascading cascading effect that's a benefit of social media second thing is this is the best platform you can build a customer loyalty now you see this is a direct interactive model where you are able to get direct information to exchange instantaneously through this media so we know uh, you know for example if your company has got a page or a somebody dedicated person who takes a feedback and sometimes we used to get this calls uh, you know we call it as a survey but very often i used to get the call from uh, you know some companies that about asking about the quality of the service quality of the products immediately after taking the services or benefits sorry for that uh, dear audience all right so i think let's let's move on the number one is increase the brand exposure second thing is it build a loyal customer base where you are able to take control of your you are in direct connection with the customers through this medium because there is no intermediate in between you know the pulse of the customers and you can build that comfort because you know imagine you 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 are handling a number of loyal customers and how you know the word can go around and it can have a uh what they call cascading effect the third is that it can generate leads once you run a campaign for example or once you run a uh 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 what i call you know advertisement you will have a list of customers 
in your portal, in your database, which can be used as a lead for your upcoming, you know, you can, uh, you know, uh, products that you're launching, or you can share the information about what exactly, uh, you know, uh, information about the company and all that. And, and then even you can plan your product launch through, for example, Facebook and Instagram. They allow tagging, you know, a new product uh, through this medium. That's number three. Now, four is you can also gain insight about your customers, where your customer base is having a large number. What is the age group that coming your, uh, you know, people are come buying your products? What is the gender? Are there different nationality, language speaking people? So there are a variety of information you can get from this, uh, what you call social media audit, because audit gives a detailed picture what are the pockets of your products, your customers, what, uh, let it be a manufacturing product, let it be a, a service of anything, where they come from. So if you monitor it, it definitely can give leads to give more focus into them, to give more focus into the uh, demographics, age, gender, their buying habits, all those things. This is at number one, four. Gain insights about your customers. Now, obviously, this all leads to improving the sales because once you know your all these segments, once you know, uh, uh, you know where your uh, strong points are, the strongholds are there. Definitely, that will create a different, uh, you know, sales volume improvement. Now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, Facebook and Instagram helps to tag your new products. So, what happens is, you know, this also gives a ripple effect. The second thing you can do to improve sales is there is something called an influencer marketing. Influencer marketing is something. Hello. Yes. Yes. Please. Yeah. 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 Influencer marketing is this is a lot of companies are using. What they do is that they will choose or the company will choose one or two people who is popular in this media, YouTube or Facebook or anything who does the job, and they they take them as a uh, end user of these customers. And help them to launch products to them. For example, somebody is having a hundred thousand customer base or viewers in YouTube. So a company can approach this gentleman and say, "Okay, why don't you use my product and just make your comments, make a review, basically, and that can have an you know additional influence of your product in increasing the sales. That is called influencer marketing. Number six is that get better search engine results. Now imagine. Your company has already a website which details all the details about the products and services that you're doing, and you're running in a Facebook ad or Instagram ad or YouTube or whatever it is. That itself can generate a traffic into your website, and that also is an additional positive benefit of social media marketing. Seven is learn about your competition. Now, this is very interesting thing. Now, you, from all this, what you're doing so, through social media, you will have an audit report of what customers are coming to you, as well as you can also get an insight into your competitors. Where are they operating? How are they doing? And, now, and I'm, I'm not talking about the inside details, but the data. What is the number of people my competitor is doing in this market or this pocket, this state? This is an interesting one. Now, the eighth benefit is using the customer service. This you, social media can be a powerful tool for using your customer service cell. Now, Nike. Nike uses exactly the social media platform to directly interact with the customers and solving the problems then and there. This is a very powerful. Otherwise, you will not get. See, where is which company you keeps a... Uh, uh, customer service sell only to on through the website. Nobody does that. When you have a social media, when you are connected with the public, when you have access to these kind of uh, you know platforms, this can be a powerful tool for creating your customer instant, instantaneous, and regular feedback. Now, definitely, if you compare the traditional way of marketing, the cost is very very less. That's number nine. So it lowers your company's budget on putting the money on advertisements, Facebook, Instagram, and it's, it's much, much uh, economical compared to the traditional conventional method. And number 10, it increase your traffic in the website, your company website. 
when you how it increases the traffic obviously when you have your products tagged into your website when you have your products launched through facebook when you have product launched through instagram it generates a traffic to your website in the end now these are the benefits of social media marketing making your presence company's presence in this field and for that to happen what are there is there is definitely some very serious preparations from an organization point of view to be done now the second point is that we are talking about four major platforms through social media marketing number one is as per the current rating the social the the best platform for a social media marketing is instagram that's a that comes in the top list second is youtube you can run a youtube ad uh, 30 seconds one minute ad you can run of the company third is a facebook and fourth is a twitter now there are other other media other channels of social media where it definitely can help but these four social media uh, properties has got the highest number of returns in terms of and they have the hard largest viewership and because of that reason they can also give generate your company's visibility of the products as well as the income now all this said and done these are the benefits of moving into so because i i think it is more or less obvious that business owners uh, entrepreneurs have to think in a different direction because the traditional way of people coming to me and buying visiting the store is not they, that that has to come back that will come back for certain segment but if you have to keep business running and to increase the profit and to increase the volume definitely social media is one platform but now the third thing is that how do you ensure that your business is maintaining it now there are many many things i can talk about but i've just narrowed down into three or four points now the first point the first bullet point that i would say that clarity clarity of your business clarity of what service products i the company into let me elaborate it now when i say clarity it's not that i know i am i have this number of products i know i'm operating this field i know i am in mumbai i am in delhi i am in xyz location no i'm talking about the clarity of long term vision and that long term vision cascaded broken down into goals targets and daily plans is it clear as an entrepreneur as a business owner as a ceo as a whatever the position is is it very clear that is this translated into you know daily action plan forms because if that is not there how are you going to show your visibility show your company into the public because look at this way say i can very easily connect with this business as food and beverage company because food and give beverage outlet for example say that's one place you directly know whether the customer is going to come back to you or not there is no delay if i enter into a restaurant and if i like the food like the ambience like the place i might come back the chances of me coming back to the restaurant is more but it can go the other way when even a small small you know uh, kind of a uh, if, if everything is good food is good but i don't like the ambience there is a bad smell so it it gives a direct impact how do you correct this so that happens from this you know even putting these kind of things second plus is this goals this plan this is integrated with your team your workforce do they know that what business what kind of products are you into because ultimately it's not the business owner who's going to handle this one two three things so is it transferred is it knowledge these long term visions long term targets long term action plans is transferred to the workforce this is very very important and i think uh, you know uh, uh, this is one area which we think i know see because why i am saying this is 
I've been on the other side as an employee, sitting in the meeting rooms and you know discussing the, the company, the stakeholders discussing of plans, 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 and not being translated into action plans for a long period of time. So, so when I now I'm taken up a role of an entrepreneur, I can very well connect with that. Why did not they do that? They could have done X, Y, Z at that point in time, which could have saved the situation. So right now I can think in two directions and that that one step could have saved this thing. So clarity of what business are you into? Is this cascaded to the employees? Very, very important. Now, there is another element. It. Whatever business you are into, let it be a service, a product, a manufacturing, anything. So one side, this is the manufacturer or the seller or the producer of that particular product. The other end is a customer the user or the end, the end benefit. What is happening actually? I have something to sell and there is somebody to buy. So I pay the money, I get the product. Now, there has to be, if, if you have to sustain, if you're, if you're thinking of business growth, if you're seriously thinking of being in the market for a long time, if you're thinking of coming a step above your competitor, there has to be something in between. And I call it as a value addition. What is that you're giving to the customer apart from the product he's getting for the money he's spending? This is the, the, the center thing which is called a value addition is intangible. And now how do you prepare this? This comes from the point which I discussed earlier, the clarity. So the clarity of the product comes from, leads to adding a value addition. It's it's need it definitely it's not something tangible you cannot measure it, but it can be you know you don't need to spend the money for it. It could be a thank you letter after the person coming and buying your product, or it could be something which the customer is getting a confidence in coming back to you again and buying the product. So the business owners has to think about some small element which uh, that you know. Uh, adds value into the product apart from the commodity, the exchange. Because when you say this is only transactional, the value addition is something which comes, it's not transactional. It is something which is giving out to the customer, which helps you to retain. When you especially trying to connect with the social media, this is very, very important. Because why should I go to Flipkart or a Snap deal instead of Amazon? So I always prefer to buy on Amazon. Because look at the detailing there. See, of course, it's, it's very different as a business model. It's an e-commerce, but very easy to understand. Why should I, why am I going again and again to Amazon to buy things? Because look at the detailing. Look at each and every piece of information that as a customer, I'm looking for, it's there. Now, when I go to another website, and I, this is from my personal experience, I'm telling you, many times I've purchased some other items from some other visit. Uh, portal and the moment you buy the product and pay the money it's disconnected there's no more in the picture but look at amazon for example for in, the, in this in context their after service feedback their contacts everything it's open to you if you have any problem you call them up and they're immediately there to respond so this this can happen in any industry anywhere this has to happen definitely if you're trying to scale up the business now the third uh, uh, or the second element is called the commitment. Now, this commitment is to the quality, the quality that you're delivering. That because if if you are here to give the product what uh, you know uh, what you, what you call the, the uh, low volume product or low value product, and that you expect to make a high volume business out of it, that's no more is going to work in today's world because customer has got access into all the product information, everything on the phone, Android phone today. It's not like the old, you know, I, I don't mind in waiting for a couple of days for me to come this from another part of the country. I can place the order on online. I can get it. So again, this all connects back to the power of social media. So that that is number one. Second thing is a commitment to the team. So as I said, while you're cascading the vision or the mission of the company or the, the daily action plans is your commitment as a business owner also to the team that you are with them to stand by to ensure that this happens in the long run commitment to the business goals you set a business goal for two years three years and then you 
you know, uh, look, trying to plan out to execute it in that way. Now, once you take a decision, once you try to plan, uh, plan it out and cascade to the uh, team, then you need to be with that decision. Give the commitment to the team that, yes, we can do it and we do it. Because ultimately, employees and employee, a business owner, the employees does not think like a business owner. Unless and until as a business owner, as a CEO, as an owner of the company, that confidence, the commitment is not put forward, it's difficult to sustain. That's number three. Now, obviously, all this cascades down to the proper communication to the team. Is it communicated properly? Yeah. All this put together, the clarity, the commitment, the value addition, what kind of a synergy are you making with the whole picture? If this is clearly done. Now, this is, I don't see that as a big exercise or the, you don't need to do a study, case study and everything. It can be as simple as that. Just identifying what is that required for me to connect, to take it to the next level of social media or to the next level where I can present it. Am I ready with the website? Am I ready with the back, backward? And now, uh, I'll come to that point now. So, uh, commitment, clarity, commitment, value addition. These things has to happen even before stepping into the social media marketing. Now, this very, very important uh, point is that called backward integration. Now, what I mean by backward integration is very simply, I'll put it, it's very easy to understand. Uh, say, example, you are going with your family for a weekend dinner to a restaurant, uh, a popular restaurant. Now, you're going for there for the first time. Now, as a customer, do I feel like going back, as I mentioned earlier? You know, you look at you're the businessman, and the customer is entering your premise. And the moment the person enters the premises, it is their responsibility. It is each and every employee's responsibility to ensure that everything is done and given delivered and ensure that he comes back. He gives a feeling that he has to come back. Now, for that to happen, there are so many small, small elements which you need to plug in to the people working within the restaurant atmosphere. Made be a chef giving the correct portion control or the food giving the best quality food, best tasty food. Maybe a service that provides that the moment the customer sits in the table, it ensure that the everything is clean, neat, and tidy. So how do you plan it? It's called backward integration. So when a customer comes, you know exactly what to do, when to talk, when not to talk, how long it takes to get an order and everything. Now, I'm telling in the simplest sense that because I know that there could be business owners in this group that are running, you know, uh, you know, high volume, uh, long process items that you've been managing it. But again, only thing the magnitude differentiates. The process also, the, what, what the inter main element remains same. It's called a backward indication. So I worked in an FMCG company and we used to talk about a lot of into, uh, you know, backward integration because of this. When the customer gets a product, how is this, how does it comes on the table? Because this is very, very important to ensure your presence in the social media in terms of delivering the quality, delivering the uh, uh, timely delivery and the service afterwards. Uh, obviously, the third part, the third larger part is the tools. Now, uh, I would say there are a lot of Facebook campaign, uh, people who does the Facebook campaign professionally and uh, keeping a budget for your organization is very, very, very important. Because knowing, understanding the tools is not the case here. There has to be someone who has done it earlier, who know the market, who, because when you run a campaign, when you, for, when you run a Facebook campaign, for instance, it goes out to thousands of people at one time. Now, how do you ensure that what is your end customer? Where do you want the Facebook ca campaign to be done? And what are the, uh, uh, images that you're giving out of the company, all this is very important and for that matter, you should keep a budget for the company and go with a professional social media marketing campaign team or ex simply put you have, you know, you ideally to put a external service, a service provider for that because uh, uh, it's not in today's time, it's not difficult to find a, a person even a, an, an a freelancer to run the ads but the point is that as a business person, it's we are here to stay for a long time. 
we are here to understand from time to time what are the pulses of the uh, my my product how do i ensure that after 6 months i will increase my sales how do i ensure the volume that is coming up from the sales so there are many many details which comes from the social media marketing ads and uh, yeah ultimately ultimately whatever you do it, there is a phrase uh, said by a big businessman success is a decision because once you decide then everything falls into place whether to scale up the business whether to give a clarity to the organization that you are leading right now whether to give in the commitment to the team to the product to the service and to the end customer the commitment has to come from here because we are not talking about the you know uh, I, i'm sure that uh, uh, here in this group whoever hearing is they are the business owners they are the leaders they are the forerunners of this company so that as a leader as a forerunner as a ceo as a entrepreneur just one decision and everything is just get cascaded into a practical plan i think uh, uh, hopefully i covered little bit of information and uh, um, you know it will be little helpful because i think we are running out of little bit of time uh, yeah so yeah. i uh, back to you uh, back to you sandeep and uh, okay thank you thank you murli thank you it was great and in fact uh, i was just listening to what you were sharing okay and i was talking to mr goel today also in a nutshell since we have mostly uh, uh, promoters of large and medium scale organizations small organization entrepreneurs okay uh, social media is important and you also focused on why did i focus on social media my entire company vision and proposition has to be also find it the reason is hmm. it, if it is not there that hmm. also gets exposed very fast because employees are on the social media customers are on the social media reviews are available information is available so when i am buying a product That's i just true. need to do a review yeah. on everything so until even if i am providing yeah. constructions even if i am manufacturing maybe uh, i am into delivery yeah. of vehicles or excavators yeah. movers not only food what happens is i can sell and market every product to my targeted segment through social media no doubt about it but at the same time Absolutely. very relevant points are while i do that it's not only marketing i have to take care of my professional image and i have to take care of my internal customers and the planning because True. both are accessible and approachable on the social media so it's great no it's very interesting mr goel any point which you like to add on you see when we uh, do a uh, direct uh, or indirect marketing in a traditional way hmm. but the customer or uh, the probably the buyer or the uh, vendor they are not connected uh, and you are not promoting you are not available 24 into 7 right uh, i think there is a question we must take care before we go online and before we promote our business uh, by social media we must be uh, available and we must be ready because part of the uh, here the positivity is one part but the yes. negative will spread faster than the positivity so one must understand that uh, in case if you are not ready probably you must not go uh, live and uh, it's like uh, the moment your camera is on you can't uh, uh, do the rehearsal so yes. be ready with your team uh, with your resources and then uh, be on live yeah very true very true preparation is very very important very important absolutely and that that i know that because of uh, you know our uh, pressure on time i could not expand much there are as, as mr goel mentioned it is also very important to see the what happens if you don't do this we are talking about only doing this but if right. you don't do this it can completely boomerang it can give a absolutely again you know opposite effect before even you know you should be prepared to even face the worst situation so that you know if, if there is something happens you are you are prepared to do that take care of it 
Mr. Murli, yeah. can you listen me? Yep. My hello. Yes, sir. Mr. Murli. Yes, Mr. Govin. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Murli, uh, your lecture was very good. So hardly there is a question. You know, Thank I uh, will discuss a, uh, a uh, you know something specific. Okay. That I was a uh, I was a CFO of a real estate company. Okay. And part of the marketing team as well. Okay. So uh, when we used to plan our budget, a full year budget or half year uh, budget, it was very difficult to mm -hmm. segregate that how much uh, we should go on the inset method of newspaper holdings and all those things, or how much we go to the social media. Right. So mm -hmm. one has to make this study. Yeah. It's necessary for to to for said that owners or the marketing people have to make some study on this. It was really very difficult. How can we do it? I mean, uh, best of it. You see, you understood my question. I, I understood. I understood, and I, and I can immediately recollect this. The the you know, I I was with a, a company called Ojan Coca Cola, and uh, we used to have these not a business oriented meetings, but we used to have you know uh, employee engagement discussions and happening for hours. Now I can relate to similar. Decision making questions, which was coming up, not in terms of finance, in the implication of finance, but I, I can, I'm, I'm getting it. See, we cannot narrow down to one good or bad question. It is difficult. That's why I said it, it's not one. See, if you are an owner, business owner, you can take a decision and we implement it. Whether it is 100% right, whether it is this way right. No, it is too difficult to decide. So that's why I said, I, why, why did I close with a quote is that it's ultimately a decision coming from the business owner whether to do or not to do. Because I'll tell you two reasons for this. If you take a decision, can you blame yourself if, does, if, if it does not go well? You will not know. Because I took a decision. I was ready, prepared in my mind, whether it's going to good, go good or bad, it's okay with me. Now imagine if you don't take it, and if you are managing a thousand team running your business, what will happen? So it's there is no right or wrong here. Now I can understand from a corporate point of view where the directors or the owners has got some interest in looking at the percentage of your overall budget. You keep that money only for the marketing. It's a different equation. So I feel this. There are two aspects to this. One is that it's not my company. I'm only managing that part of the finance. So I have to comply to what the other side is demanding. There's, there is absolutely no, you know, you cannot bring this together. It's as I always remember this Ratan Tata's quote. There is no right or wrong decision. Take a decision, make it right. So I don't answer your question, uh, but it's always uh, narrowed down to a decision. Yeah, uh, yeah, only thing because the owners uh, uh, they will always gali denge ki yar tum logon ne mera paisa barbad kar diya sale to aayi nahi. Try to add on to the. No, yes, right. Nothing can be done in this. Yeah, you have to take that risk. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Thank you. Continue this. Uh, what Murli has spoken. Uh, you uh. see. I would like to add a line that, uh, like, as a CA, Govind Bhai has yes. said, you see, we all know how much we have to add uh, in the kitty of income tax every quarter, advance tax. Uh, Correct. It, uh, based on the data that last year our sales were uh, this much, and probably you expect a growth of 10% or 20%, and you calculate your income tax accordingly. Now, same way, you see, most of the budgets, marketing budgets, are decided based on the perception of the team. Actually, uh, it is not been done uh, scientifically. Now, let's say take an example of you want to uh, have a customer base of let's say one lakh people visiting your uh, a mall. Mall, if we talk about, and uh, scientifically data says that if you send emailers, probably you get a uh, opening ratio which will be around two point five to three percent. And so that's when if you uh, want one lakh people to see your mail, so you have to send how many? Around uh, 30 lakhs? Absolutely. Uh, mm. So you see, you need to... Correct, correct. 
figure out backward uh, it is a, it is actually not about social media or the direct marketing and direct marketing we do not uh, work out on the marketing budget scientifically we don't have the historical data that what was no, you cannot i understand you cannot i'm only i was telling that uh, how can you do the best of it i mean so when you have the historical data with you if probably the team spends a little bit time on collecting the customer base existing customer base and see the Correct. performance and see the results probably based on that you can define that yes from social media i generate uh, 10000 leads from direct marketing newspaper i used to get every ad used to get me let's say uh, 20 customers or maybe from tv ads i used to get this much of response so once you collect the data then you will have a clear cut picture in front of you that how much to spend and uh i'd like to thank you all uh thank you moti for your time efforts it was quite exciting mr goel thanks thanks everybody and i'm sure we look forward to more exciting seminars that will be going on and we'll be shortly announcing for the next uh, weeks saturday uh, topic very shortly maybe by tuesday or wednesday have a nice weekend see you all thank you thank you very bye -bye. much thank you very much sandeep thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Goel. Thank you for this opportunity, and uh, see you always. Thank you, thank you, sir. It was very, it was a great uh, lecture. There was hardly any question. <laughs> You're most welcome. Thank you can connect and take a discussion forward. Anybody? Thank you, thank you Sandeep and Morley both uh, for you. such a nice uh, uh, addition of knowledge in our uh, Panisha webinar series. Resolve the unsolved, and this will be available on our YouTube channel. and hope to see a very vibrant uh, seminar topic next week for next week thank you very much thank, thank you all of you thank you